Dr. Lara Aknan in Vancouver. She is an assistant professor at Simon Fraser University, and she also serves as an associate editor of the World Happiness Report. So happy to have you on the show. Um, to say the last year has been uh, difficult for people across the globe, I think would be an understatement. So for Finland to actually retain its title for the fourth year in a row, quite an accomplishment. Yes, it certainly has been. Um, yeah, this year's report, the World Happiness Report, has taken a deep dive trying to understand if and how COVID has kind of shifted the landscape for self-reported life satisfaction. Um, and as you point out, Finland still remains near the top of the list. It is the top of the list for the fourth year in a row. Um, we think that has a lot to do with some of the factors that existed in Finland beforehand. Um, but it's also worth acknowledging that um, at the top at the top rankings for the countries this year there actually wasn't that much movement um, happiness reports or life satisfaction reports um, in this year's report were not all that different than last year um, although there was a lot of um, detection in people's positive and negative affect, um, their daily life experience is really shifting around. Life satisfaction was surprisingly stable over the past year. Um, and so um, that has led to some, some deep inquiries into what is going on. Um, but in Finland in particular, it seems that their last year's report actually did a deep dive into what might make these Nordic countries so exceptional in terms of their um, life satisfaction. And what the authors recognized and pointed out is that there is some strong and stable government um, spending and support, um, that there is this high institutional quality, that there are low levels of inequality, um, and generally speaking, there's a sense of freedom um, and, and autonomy in people's choices. Basically, this trust in social institutions um, provides a lot of satisfaction for people who live there, um, particularly life satisfaction. Positive emotions are a little lower. Um, okay, so uh, I understand some of the, uh, the issues that make uh, Finland uh, the happiest place to live in. But what's interesting, and you, and you, and you briefly touched upon it, there hasn't been much mm -hmm. change. Uh, you have countries like Iceland, uh, like Denmark, that are number two and number three. Uh, these are mm -hmm. all sort of uh, from the same part of the world. So they're obviously, uh, they're, you know, displaying similar characteristics as well. Yeah, so by and large, the Nordic countries have been doing exceptionally well over the past several years. And, and I think many of them share some of these kind of perhaps might be what might be key features um, for for citizens' well-being. And, and, and the, the similar themes on institutional quality, um, uh, low corruption in the government, um, and relatively low levels of inequality. Now, these features aren't limited to the Nordic countries. They can be detected in other places like Australia, New Zealand. Some, uh, some years, Canada is really high, highly rated on many of these things as well. Um, so it's, it's not unachievable by other places, um, but these factors are often strongly correlated and very well predicted with uh, citizens' reports of life satisfaction. Dr. Ogden, I know you have to leave, so we're going to have to leave it there. Uh, very uh, uh, happy talking to you. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks.